This is the Bush Whisperer. I've come to talk to you today about shearing. I'm in the beautiful Penguin Sanctuary, southern tip of Africa, Boulder's Penguin Sanctuary, Simon's Town, Cape Town. Shearing is caring. The shaman understands that this universe is a private one that is shared between all beings. And that the guides share us as we share the guides, as they all move through us producing the reality that seems to be personality and bringing through this reality of personality the sphere of creation and that we are all bound by these same laws fundamental to the essence of truth and that the guides are the higher aspects of the self that are the structuring aspect of unity that brings the diversity of life back to the singularity of being this is fundamental to understanding the nature of our existence, to understanding the nature of this journey through this world. We tend to want to <clears throat> objectify all things and people in this life. We don't realize that when we objectify, we are truly operating from the subjective. And from the subjective reality, we objectify all things. And if we are operating through the sphere of objective, we tend to subjectify all things. And then everything is about me. Everything is about me. Or vice versa. To realize how this reality is, a shared reality, is fundamental to realizing that the thoughts that move through you move through me. That we are sharing an experience, we are sharing passions, we are sharing emotions, Everything that's within me is within you. We are sharing the entirety of this universe. And we're also sharing space. We're sharing time. We're sharing everything. So how is it then that humans have become so conflicted and afflicted by the demon of greed? That's something to consider. The demon of greed is something I can talk at length about. We're all stuck in this reality because of the demon and greed, fundamentally. We always want to be sure that we will have enough for the future. Everybody's living in a sense of fear, afraid that we will be left behind, or that we will be lacking in resources, or that we will be hurt, or cold, or in danger. And so we allow this demon to control our lives. We build large walls and fences, big doors with locks, and we hide behind our locked doors in our cordoned off little homes, separating ourselves from each other, pretending that the separation is a reality we're living in, without recognizing that beyond all of the reality of these doors and walls, we are sharing the entirety of our inner realities with each other, whether we are conscious of it or not conscious of it. The more we start to objectify the outside reality, and create these walls of division, the less we are able to appreciate and realize that the inner realities are being shared. Is this possibly the reason why Karma Yoga is all about service to other people, other beings, other creatures? Could this be one of the reasons that we are moving through this reality, trying to find some sense of belonging? And by, by finding a sense of belonging, we want to share an experience with other people. We want a lover. We want someone to share our lives with. It's a deep innate need. It's a deep innate driving force that sort of defines us as human beings, if we want to look at it from the most fundamental aspects. And so it is in this reality we are finding ourselves moving through time in this way. Many of us, or most of us, are a little bit lost as we try to find meaning in this world of separation that we've structured and created around ourselves. Lost in the sphere of separation, we forget that time and space are not what they seem to be. Good morning. And that the reality that we're experiencing is nothing like it is. For reality is fundamentally a dream. The shaman understands the fundamentals of dream time. And the way in which the three dreams of creation become this dream. And to become attuned to the realities within, so that we are able to understand the nature of dream time, we need to be able to be attuned to the reality without. And the reality without, and I mean on the outside, needs to reflect the inner reality. 
which is a shared reality. And this is one of the most fundamental things to understand about the spiritual path. And by becoming aligned with this principle of sharing, we start caring. See? And caring opens the heart and causes us to start daring to expose ourselves, to become vulnerable. The caring also opens you to empathy. The empathy brings compassion. The compassion, once again, implies greater depth of caring. We start noticing that sometimes we have to share what we've got with other people who have less. That's why charity exists. That's why we feel that deep impulse if we see a child in need to want to do something to help that child. We've all felt that. It's so important not to let that aspect of the heart fall asleep. We've been taught in this modern world that one shouldn't give to homeless people. One should give to an organization, which is a charitable trust. And when we look at the way these charitable trusts operate, some of the biggest ones in the world, I think you're very lucky if three or four or five percent of what you give gets to the people you're trying to give it to. All the money gets lost in the cracks. All the resources get lost in the cracks. The systemic structure of this world that we're living in, and by that I mean the human world, is based upon the fundamentals of money. And so the money structure has been set up in such a way that the money gets lost in the cracks. So I say to you, don't support charitable trusts. Become your own charitable trust. Rather than giving money to a charity and walking past a homeless person feeling, oh, well, I've done my bit, rather don't. If you're in the UK and you're giving a pound to someone, you're giving a pound to a charity, you're giving two or three pence to someone who's hungry. You may as well take that pound and buy a loaf of bread or buy a sandwich and give it to somebody that's hungry on the street. That's real charity. That's real sharing. We've been hoodwinked. We've been taught to be afraid of each other. We've been taught to fear people that are different from us. And so we hide behind these bundles of fear that encapsulate our beings, causing us to be trapped within our thoughts. Instead of recognizing that the entirety of life is one expression of consciousness, and we're all sharing it. We're all on this journey of life, on this journey through the sphere of consciousness, experiencing reality. And it's fundamental for us to be able to let go of our fears, to be able to face up to who we are, to recognize that what we do for and to others is how we're going to feel about ourselves, because it's what we're going to hold within our subconscious field. And this will align us with different thoughts. For this universe is essentially an expression of telepathy, and we are all swimming through these ocean of thoughts. I made a video about this. Take a look at it. It's also fundamental for us to grasp that we might think we know better at times. We might think that we're in a more enlightened state than others. But we are sharing this experience. So what we don't know, others know through the balance of life. So there's something to learn from every different being if we truly learn to listen to the heart. Like and share this so others can find this touch their hearts if you think that's a good idea. Let's work these algorithms. These algorithms are separating us. These algorithms are allowing corporations to choose who and what gets shown to who, whomever. And so the structures of life are being undermined by the foundations of money. It's a bit of a sad reality, but it's what we're living through. It's what we're living in. And so learning to share, share videos, share YouTube videos, share our resources, share our hearts, share money with those that are in need, go out and find homeless people and feed them. You'll never ever feel bad about that. Giving money to homeless people might not be the best idea. Because sometimes they have drug addictions, they have problems, and the money can just become more of a trap for them. But give a homeless person a meal, you've done something good for the day. Give them a jacket. Find a homeless person and give them something warm, a blanket. So there are many ways of sharing. Next time you're doing your shopping and you see a blanket that's reduced price or special, or you're buying clothes and you see there's some really cheap clothes, cheap socks, cheap pants, cheap shirts, buy extra. Put them in a bag. Walk around. One day you see a homeless person in the street, you think it will fit them, give it to them. That's the way you share. You don't have to give away money. There are a lot of ways of understanding 
that life isn't what it seems to be. I was in a very important position in a bank of ideas, which was an activist situation that we started, myself and Phoenix and a, another collective, years ago, many years ago, in, in the UK in 2011. And we learned to walk away from money and ask the public to rather give us resources, give us things, give us clothes, give us things that we can use that we can share with other people. And that way we were able to actually make a far bigger impact on the local paradigm of London where we were practicing this activist resource center that we created after taking a piece of legisl uh, a piece of property from UBS which we used to this end to create a resource center for, for people the bank of ideas it was called so there's something that I learned from that money isn't everything it's more important to get resources because people really need that food everybody's always going to need food so sharing begins with the heart. It begins at home. It begins with your family. It begins with your friends. Are you greedy? Or are you selfless? Do you share what you have? Do you share of your heart? Do you speak the truth of your mind? Do you share what you're thinking truly? Do you share what you're feeling? Do you share your vulnerability? You can't just share one thing and not share others. If you're going to share, share it all. And the moment you start sharing it all, you start noticing that you have a share in the structure of reality. We all have a proverbial business share, as the metaphor goes. And to understand and appreciate that our business share within the structure of reality is part of the consensus building nature of reality, we can start to drive the greater world and the reality through our expressions of being and the way that we live our lives. I hope this has been useful. Hit the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel while you're liking and sharing, and uh, you won't miss other updates. I I'm dropping videos every day, I'm building this teaching course fast and hard. And it's all here for your resource. It's all here on YouTube for free and being expressed elsewhere. If you want to help me and help this channel, join my Patreon. There's various different tiers. There you can get the same videos advertising free. I'm about to be uploading them all to my Patreon. Um, I'm not advertising my YouTube channels. My YouTube channels are unfinanced, by the way. So you get the usual YouTube ads on these channels. YouTube just wants to advertise everything, which is fine. They've got to make their money for keeping their servers running. One can appreciate and understand that. So I hope you have an absolutely gorgeous day. I hope you take care. I hope you learn to share of your heart, of yourself, of your resources, and this video so that others can also learn to share of themselves, of their hearts, their resources. Have an absolutely gorgeous day. Be well. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.